Doesn't anyone in this house sleep anymore? He asked. We need some help, Sabrina said. The little man rolled his eyes and let out his belly. Very well, what the scoop? We need something that will help us get into the boiler room at school, Daphne said. The door is locked, so we need something that will turn us invisible or let us walk through walls. Children, this isn't Walmart, Miro replied. I don't have everything, but there is something that might help. Follow me. As they followed Miro down the long hallway, Sabrina read the golden plaques on each of the doors, a favorite habit developed on previous visits. Leprechaun gold, floor plans for the gingerbread houses, talking fish, ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, TikTok men, Caliban. The doors went on and on. What was Miro going to offer them? Soon he stopped at a door for a plate that read the pantry. He held out his hand and Sabrina gave him the her key ring. He searched through her collection and found the one that unlocked the door. Everyone stepped inside where much to the girl's chagrin there stood an old rundown refrigerator. I've never heard of the magic refrigerator, Daphne said. Is that a grim story or someone else? There's no such thing as a magic refrigerator, Mira said as he opened the door. It's what's inside that's important. He he opened the fridge, bent down, and rummaged around inside. He pulled out a bag of rotten carrots. I really have to toss these out, he mumbled. He opened a carton of milk and took a sniff, his face crinkling up in disgust. As he closed the carton and put it back in the refrigerator, Finally, he took out a package of jupe's boxes and handed them to the kids. Drink me, Daphne read. This is from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Sabrina said happily. This was make us drink to about the size of an ant, Mira said. At that size, you could just walk under the door and get into any room you want. But you'll need these too. He reached in and pulled out several individually wrapped snack cakes. They looked just like the kind Sabrina used to buy at the deli near their Manhattan apartment, but the label said, Eat me. These will make you big, but don't eat too many. They're not exactly Atkins friendly, Mirror warned. Tweedledee and Tweedledum sold these for a week at the convenience store before your grandmother confiscated their stock. The town was filled with giant children. It took us a week to sort it out. We'll need four of each, I think, Sabrina said. But there's only three of us, Daphne argued. I have a feeling the great detective Wendell Hamelin is going to change his mind about being a loner, her sister replied. The next day at school, the trio walked down the crowded hallway toward the boiler room. Sabrina scrutinized every kid along the way. Any one of them could be a giant spider or a frog girl, but besides being exhausted, they all looked just like every other kid Sabrina had ever seen. At least her suspicions about Wendell proved correct. He was waiting for them by the doorway with a handkerchief and a runny nose. I've been doing some thinking, and I believe that joining forces might be a great idea, but under a couple of conditions, he said, rushing to join the group. What conditions? Sabrina said, I handle all the dangerous work, the chubby boy said, puffing up his chest like a tough guy. The children looked at one another and thought thought off a laugh. Fine, Sabrina said, I think we should have a look in the tunnels right away. I agree, but there's a problem, Wendell said, wiping his nose again. They changed the locks on the boiler room door. Sabrina reached into her backpack and tossed the boy and ate me cake and drink me juice box. What are these? he asked. The key to the new lock. You want to do it now? Daphne cried. Miss White will notice I'm gone and come looking for me. We'll worry about that later, said her sister. Lunchtime is too busy and the bad guys will probably be watching after school. We'll wait until the bell rings for class and once the hall is empty, we'll get started. 
Soon enough, the bell rang and the kids filed into their classes. Sabrina and Daphne pocket wandered, milled around, trying to appear as if they were on their way to class without actually going anywhere. Once they were alone in the hall, the children took out their drink me boxes and inserted the handy straws attached to the sides. How much do we drink? Daphne asked, sniffing at the box. I don't know, Sabrina said. I guess until it starts working. Puck took a long slurp, and when he was finished, he opened his mouth and belched. It's fruity, he exclaimed. Suddenly, to a sound like that of a squeaker balloon losing its air, his body shrank to half its size. Even his clothes, the eat me cake, and the juice box got tiny. Drink more, Daphne insisted. You aren't small enough to get under the door. And hurry up, Sabrina said. Scanning the hallway, the last thing she wanted was a teacher or student to see this craziness. Puck took another sip and shrank even further. Soon, he was no taller than a quarter standing on its end. Sabrina bent down and examined the tiny boy. You have no idea how tempted I am to squish you, she said. And you have no idea how big your nose hairs are, he squeaked. Sabrina covered her face with her hand. Our turn, Daphne said. The three other children took big sips out of their boxes, and in no time, they were all shrinking too. The liquid did taste fruity, like pineapples and cherry pie at the same time. A cool tingle ran down Sabrina's throat, into her belly, and then into her legs and arms. The sensation wasn't unlike having a good stretch after a wonderful night's sleep. When she finished the box, she was the same size as Puck. Let's go in there before we wind up on the bottom of someone's shoe, this said the tiny window. He marched over to the door and looked back. I'll go first in case there's someone waiting for us on the other side. He yanked out his hanky, blew a hole in it, and shoved it back into his pocket. Then he walked underneath the door without even having to bend over. Daphne took Sabrina's hand and together they followed Wendell, with Puck bringing up the rear. I should be doing the dangerous stuff, he grumbled. Once the group was on the other side, the children had a chance to look around. A bucket full of mops sat in the corner, boxes of trash bags and rolls of toilet paper filled a nearby shelf, and an ancient coal furnace rested in the center of the room. Not far off, a brand new electric furnace clicked and popped as it pushed warm air through... Wait a second. Let me read on this a bit. Okay, perfect. Once the group was on the other side, the children had a chance to look around. A bucket full of mops sat in the corner. Boxes of trash bags and rolls of toilet paper filled a nearby shelf, and an ancient coal furnace rested in the center of the room. Not far off, a brand new electric furnace clicked and popped as it pushed warm air throughout the vents of the school. But what was bewildering was how gigantic everything was. The mops looked as tall as the Empire State Building in Midtown New York City, and Sabrina suspected if one of the rolls of toilet paper were to fall off the shelf and onto them, they'd be crushed to death. Look at that table, Daphne cried, pointing at a nearby desk. It's huge. Sabrina nodded in agreement. Look at the chair, Daphne said. It's huge. Sabrina agreed. Look at that button. Daphne said, running over to a monstrous white button that had fallen off of someone's shirt. She tried to lift it, but it was too heavy for her in her shrunken state. It's huge. We need you to find you another word, Sabrina muttered. Hey, I'm seven. I don't know a lot of words, the little girl said. All right, Piggy, Puck said to Wendell. Where's the entrance to the tunnel? We need to eat the cakes to get big. The, uh, the boy detective said. The lever that opens the entrance is in the old furnace. The children reached in their pockets for the eat me cakes when suddenly the boiler room door opened. Someone's coming, Serena shouted. The door closed and a man walked over to the coal furnace. He opened a small trap door on its side and reached in. Sabrina guessed he had pushed the lever because a hum filled the room and the coal furnace began to slide across the floor. That's when Sabrina noticed it was Principal Hamelin. The principal waited patiently, and when the coal furnace had slid away, he descended a flight of stairs hidden underneath the machine.
The children rushed to the center of the room. That was your dad, Sabrina said to Wendell. What's he doing? He said. We have to follow him, Daphne insisted. We can't. If we eat the cakes and get big, he's sure to spot us, but at this size, we'll never make it down those steps, her sister argued. No worry, girls. I have a brilliant plan, Punk said proudly. He spun around on his heels and transformed into an elephant. I'll, I'll be a tiny elephant. He let out a mighty roar and charged off into the far corner of the room. Puck, we don't have time for your stupidity, Sabrina shouted after him, but a boy elephant did not respond. Soon, she could hear the scraping of metal on the floor. When Elephant Puck returned, he was pushing a dustpan off his massive head all the way to the edge of the steps. When the pan was on the edge of the top step, the elephant morphed back into the boy. Get in, he said, beaming with pride. Sabrina looked at the dustpan, hanging precariously over the edge. No way, she said. We'll kill ourselves in that thing. Daphne was already climbing inside and had found a spot in the corner to sit down. We survived Granny's driving, she said. We'll survive this too. You'll be fine, Puck assured Sabrina. You probably need someone to feed you for the rest of your life, but you'll make it. Stop being a baby and get it. Sabrina looks at the window. He shrugs and the two of them climbed into the dustpan. You all need to stay at the back of this thing, Puck explained. Oh, and one more thing. What? Sabrina cried. She didn't like the tone of his voice. Buckle up, kitties, Puck shouted as he walked to the front of the pan and leaped into the air. His body came down hard on the end of the pan and the back tilted high in the air, sending the whole thing rocketing down the steps before Sabrina could even scream. Each step it clearly just made the dustpan increase its speed until finally they crashed at the bottom of the stairs. After Sabrina checked everyone for broken bones, she punched Puck in the arm. Hey, I got us here, didn't I? He complained as he rubbed his sore shoulder. The children climbed out of the dustpan, calmed themselves, and headed down a long cavernous hall carved out of stone. Along the rocky path were pickaxes and dusty shovels, old buckets, and miles and miles of rope. Why are they up to down here? Sabrina wondered as everyone marched through the tunnel. The journey wouldn't have taken long if they were ne- if they were the usual size, but the length of a normal step never required a dozen. This is as far as I went before, Wendell said when they reached a place where the tunnels branched off into two directions. Which way should we go? Sabrina heard voices arguing in the tunnel to the left. There's someone else down here besides your father, she said. Let's go find out who. The children followed the tunnel to the left, turned a corner, and crept as close as they could to the two men arguing in the dark. Sabrina couldn't make out the other person's face, but Hamelin was one of them for sure. The principal was wringing his hand. I'm, t- I'm telling you again, this has gone too far. No one was supposed to die, Hamelin said. Piper, you worry too much, a creaky voice said. To Sabrina, it sounded like the voice of a man who had been alive a thousand years without drinking a single sip of water. Tonight, we're going to reach our goal. We would already be there if it weren't for last night. My son was missing, Hamlin cried. What was I supposed to do? Of of all people, I understand, the voice crackled. After all, I'm a father too. The difference is that my children understand how important this is, while your child just gets in the way and puts this all at risk. Don't threaten me, the principal growled. My boy isn't going to ruin our plans. And we understand each other, the voice said. Tonight we'll push forward if you can find the time. Hamilton's voice was so angry it was shaking. Don't question my dedication. This is my idea after all. I'm glad to see you still remember that. Hammond. That's the end of this video. I'll send more later. Goodbye.